This week on Tabletop Witchcraft, we're going to build this portcullis with removable gate. Hey there, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week is part three of our sewer series, and we're gonna add a piece to our system here that's gonna be a little bit more dynamic and add a really cool effect to your sewer gameplay. It's gonna be the portcullis. Now, if you tie this in to a video I did a few weeks back, the one inch scatter terrain, you can build the levers from that video, tie them in with this portcullis, and really trip up your players while they're going through your sewer system. All right, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Alright, so you'll find the link to grab these plans in the description below. I'm not quite sure yet where the final resting place is going to be for these, if it's going to be on drive through RPG or if it's going to be on itch.io. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it pretty generic for now. So you'll find those in the description below. Once you print those out, cut that template out and uh, you know just trace it out on a two inch block of XPS foam. Now we're going to cut this freehand so for a two inch thick piece of xps foam freehand i like to have the prox on uh, a little over two uh, on the temperature gauge and that'll give me good control uh, here but again you don't have to be exact with it because we're covering this whole thing in clay so you're not going to really see um, you know if it's off just a little bit now when you download the plans um, you're going to find that it looks a little bit different here we're cutting out the stencil for the top of the wall for the slit for the gate um, just cut, there won't be that dotted line there, those two dotted lines, um, but that center piece will be there that I just cut out. So just cut that there and um, you'll be all set and good to go. And again here, there won't be that dotted line you see there that I'm marking right now. It'll just be the outer marking. Uh, and the reason for that is when I put these plans together, you know, I use those for my build. And then as I find um, issues or corrections that I got to make along the way, uh, I'll make those corrections. Uh, that way, when you download these plans, you got a final set um, that's working and uh, is exactly how you need it. So here I'm just marking out uh, the opening for the gate and I'm using this hot wire knife to um, cut the gate opening out. And just take your time with this. It's not gonna go super fast, but this tool really is a lifesaver here for this part. And again, there you're gonna go all the way down to the um, that post that my thumb is on right there with that cut. You'll see here in just a minute. And this section for the gate is gonna be a little bit wider on the set of plans that you're gonna see. That's fine, just follow the plans, um, just a little bit wider. As you can see here, that's the, the true width. I made this correction on the fly because I wanted the gate to go all the way down and be, kind of be hidden on the edges in the portcullis wall. And this is just some granny grading. All the items that you're finding um, that I'm using in this video, you can find in the description below for my Amazon links. Um, so if you wanna pick some of the supplies up, you can find them all there. Uh, hot glue, some barbecue skewers, and we're going to leave them pointy at the top because we're going to use those to hot glue our stones to later on. Um, that way we have something to grab onto to pull the gate out of the top of the portcullis. Now I don't feel like, you know, taking the DOS clay and rolling out a huge mat of it um, that I don't need. So this is just a way of me measuring out roughly the size of the clay I'm going to need for each section. So just wet the clay a little bit, using our roller here to add texture, rock it back and forth. That way, um, you know, you have the texture that you're looking for on there and it doesn't stick to the roller. Then just place a little bit of tacky glue on the portcullis, placing the clay on top of it so that the grout lines are horizontal to the ground or parallel to the ground. Then 
then break out the trusty alpha knife and I love doing this right here it's so satisfying because the clay cuts so easy and forms perfectly uh, just cut out the part that you don't need then once you do the other half it's super simple lay it on there overlap it just a little bit and use that clay sculpting tool to blend together a couple of bricks make your own little grout line there in the middle and um, it'll be seamless you'll never know that it was separate pieces of clay I love this tool right here too. This is a really good tool for blending together the uh, cornerstones for the portcullis and really define those grout lines because um, that will really kind of add that illusion that it's wrapped around and it's one solid piece. All these sections here are all separate pieces of clay and you'll never notice it once you're done. So the granny grating looked really good. I like the way it looked, but um, it looked a little too new so and and too uniform really so just taking a pair of these um, little wire cutters here will just uh deteriorate the the grate i guess or the gate here by cutting out some sections some odd shapes uh, you know as many as you want and now here all i'm doing is cutting out some l shapes of xps foam adding a little bit of hot glue and sticking these over the joint there for the uh, clay and the XPS foam so you don't see that and it's a pretty typical method for hiding uh, corner seams when you're uh, doing these builds you'll see uh, I've done this in the uh, castle build as well I'll put a link up top to that if you want to check it out after this and this tool is excellent I love using it I use it um, for texturing a lot of my foam and then just age that stone up a little bit so that it doesn't look uh, like the media is different from the, the clay that we used earlier. So just using the uh, X-Acto knife here, we're gonna cut some chunks out. Now you see here, this is where the little spikes come in handy. Just uh, slap a little hot glue on there. Take a little bit of hot glue and put it on the bottom edge of the block just to kind of help it hold together a little bit better. Sliding that into place, and what you want to do is once you get it in there, pull up on the uh, the gate there, like just a little bit, just to make sure you're not hot gluing the whole thing shut. And uh, just a little safety measure here. Um, that way, when you're playing, you don't rip all these blocks off. Uh, a little bit more hot glue along the whole uh, edge of that, and you're all set. Now, this is my typical uh, stone color here that I go with. It's the apple barrel. Uh, gray It's a good base for um, for all these uh, sewer tiles that we're doing Then we're using a little bit of the graphite gray By uh, deco art and again, just like the sewer walls. We're not really dry brushing it. We're just kind of um, Splotching it on there to make it look like mildew is rising up from the lower section of the wall And you can see I got a little bit of green mixed in here with it as well I think I also used a little, yeah, I used a little bit of black paint too here. You really just want to darken this whole section up. Then I Mod Podged the gate. Now I'm just taking a little bit of a metallic color to paint the whole thing up. And we're really gonna rust this whole thing up when we're done anyway. Um, so don't worry about it looking, uh, you know, all shiny and brand new. Then I grab uh, the homemade wash here, the black wash, and hit this whole piece up. Now a little bit of Vallejo pigment. This stuff really does a good job filling in these grout lines. Um, I'm using the brown color and there's a little bit of like a tan color. I like to go from darker to light um, when, I'm, when I'm doing this method here. You'll see it's the same method that I used in the sewer wall, which was part two of the sewer series. And again, we're trying to keep everything uniform here. So uh, when you put this whole collection together, it all, uh, blends nicely all right grabbing a pipette we're just gonna put a little bit of airbrush thinner over this and that will lock in all of the pigments and again you don't want to wipe this on there because you'll end up wiping the paint job right off of uh, the poor colors um, don't worry about how much you get on there just let it soak in and you'll be all set now I took a little bit of that pigment 
and mixed it with a tiny bit of dark red paint as well as uh, some airbrush thinner. And that's gonna be our rust for the entire project. This stuff really does a great job. So, you know, rust it up however much you want. I suggest doing a large majority of all the metal. You know, this thing's in a sewer, it's constantly in water. Uh, you want it to look nasty. You don't want it to look shiny. So I really wanted to get a lot of the rust color around these openings. Obviously this is where it rusted and these pieces of the grating are falling apart. So I laid it on pretty heavy around all of those. Then I just took some Woodland Scenics polyfiber and ran it through all of those holes as if, you know, something was growing through there or maybe this uh, sewer area flooded at one point and all this stuff was, you know, rushing through the, the grating. And um, when it was raised at some point, kind of it all got stuck on there and this really does not stick well it was really a pain in the butt i used some tacky glue super glue might have been a little bit better but that polyfiber does not like to stick uh, with the glue that i've been using leave a comment below if you found a, a decent glue that holds the polyfiber on um, better than tacky glue and this is just two different colors uh, burnt grass and green grass mixed with a little bit of pva glue to add some uh, moss effect to the grading as well and this obviously you wanted to put it in all the corners, all the edges of the main pipes going up. You know, I mean, anywhere you want, but it's really where, you know, moss is going to be growing up on this thing. I went real heavy over the section that's going to be in the canal. Now this is a Reaper bat. I'm just painting him up as a little bit of extra detail on the portcullis. Painted him up a dark gray. The body's uh, a different, couple different colors of brown. And here I'm just washing the wings black with uh, some Nuln oil. The body was washed uh, brown with Agrax Earthshade, both by Games Workshop. A little bit of hot glue on that base, which I did trim down with an X-Acto, so you can't see as much of it. And we're just gonna hang them upside down from the uh, portcullis entrance. And then just touching up uh, the base where his feet are, and he's good to go. So I'm really enjoying working with this DOS clay. It's really easy to work with, and if you mess something up, it's super easy to make a fix. You can go ahead with a clay sculpting tool, a little bit of water, and mend your mistake. Just like you saw in the video where I was trying to fix the corners of all of the, uh, the portcullis and blend those in, the separate pieces of clay, it's that easy to fix anything that you might have messed up. And your cuts don't have to be exact with the XPS foam either because you're going to be covering the whole thing up anyway with the clay. If you liked the video, found it useful, head on over to my Patreon and check that out. I have did a little bit of restructuring over there. There'll be a link in the description below as to where you can find these plans. And consider giving the video a like, subscribing, hit that bell notification for further videos here on Tabletop Witchcraft. And until next time, I'll see you around.